welcome to another booktube video from me lauren from lauren and the books how are you all happy sunday say happy sunday everybody happy sunday everybody um i hope you're all doing very well david's here we're in matching green david we didn't even plan this quite often i plan that david and i dress the same because it's my favorite i already had this on david puts on this shirt a little bit of what's that sweat and what's this Probably more sweat. You're just a bit hot and bothered. Yeah. We're not bothered, it's just a bit hot. Do you know what? Ordinarily, we filmed this video twice before. This is David picking my August TBR. We didn't film well, it last that. year. You want to adjust it? Adjust the set? It just didn't... didn't look very even, did it? <laughs> we didn't film this last year. Um, oh, look at you peeping around. <laughs> um, and I don't know why. I assume because we were thick in sort of lockdowns yeah. and um, cosy reading nights and all sorts. Actually, yeah, that's probably why, because we were doing a cosy reading cosy night reading every other week, all the time. wasn't we? Um, but in the previous two years to last year, so in 2019 and 2020, no, 2018 and 2019, David has picked my August TBR, which is very interesting mm -hmm. because he picks things off the books. He picks things off the shelf purely, would you say, cover, cover purchases. Cover purchases. I am judging that book by its cover. So he picks things off and off there that I wouldn't read ever. So what I'm going to do, he's going to pick, how many books do you reckon? Oh, well, let's go for eight again. He's going to go for eight, but before he starts, there are going to be two... That actually works out perfectly, because that means there'll be ten on my TBR. Because I will already be reading Plain Bad Heroines. Look how big <coughs> this is. Excuse me. Oh, wow. This is Plain Bad Heroines by Emily M. Danforth. This is what I will be reading for my Patreon book club this month. Um, and that's a sort of average size you go for? <laughs> no, 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 no. This I've got to start early doors, because I definitely want to have it done. But that is already on the TBR. Then, David... I yeah. made a video called Five Books I Think That Will Be Five Stars um, and I'd like to get them all done by the end of the year. So I'm, I'm listening to one on audiobook now. I'm listening to Home Going by Yar Jesse at the moment on audiobook. But these four are left over. So I'd like you to pick one of these one of four. These. So it's either The Other Bennett Sister mm -hmm. by Janice Hadlow. What She's Having, Stories of Women and Foods. So that's lots of different authors. Monsters by Emerald Fennell. Or This One Sky Day by Leonie Ross. What one do you think you will go for? Let's go for what she's having. Okay, because it's got a donut on the front. Uh, yeah, and it's a, it's about food and bits, and nice. that's always fun. Okay, so that's cool. So that's, that's one. two on the TBR. Oh, that doesn't count as my... No, now you've got to pick eight. All right. So go wild, David. All right, well, I have my eyes on this one. Have you read this one? Um, no. Oh, yeah, sorry. So there are two, there are two rules. Keep picking one I am doing. Right. So the two rules are, you can't pick something that I've already read, and you can't pick the second in a series. Now I don't, or, or like a sequel in a series without me having read the first. Uh, this, these are all your favourites, They're all my favourites, so yeah, I've, I've read those already. Oh, if you wanted to pick a Clough Bound classic, you need to go from Persuasion onwards. These are the okay. ones I haven't no, read. No, I don't think I want to. No, I don't think I want to. Um, so the first book he's picked is Boy Queen, Life's a Drag Until You Try by George Lester. This is a YA book. I've been, uh, again, this is why I like David picking. Um, the audience are losing their mind. I can't move. All I can do is stare, watching as every sequin sparkles as she mesmerises me, pulling me into her world. Robin had it all figured out. A future on Broadway, a top secret boyfriend and two ride or die best friends. Oh, thank you. Um, then all his worst nightmares came true. Now his life is a hot mess. With nothing left to lose, Robin falls wig first into the glittering embrace of drag and comes face to face with the queen he was always meant to be. Robin's about to learn that sometimes your new self is your true self. So yeah, all about drag. Very excited. You've just handed me this. Why did you pick Terminal Boredom by Izumi Suzuki? Just sounds like a good name for a book. It's, it's short, short stories. stories. Are you happy for that? Yeah. So this is seven punky and pitch black stories offer English language readers an overdue introduction to Izumi Suzuki, a cult figure in Japanese literature. Exciting. So this is translated from Japanese. Oh, there's more, there's more. The fishers in a queer matriarchal utopia are exposed when a boy, a creature usually contained in ghettoised isolation, appears beneath young Yuko's window. An extreme government initiative curbing overpopulation prompts a woman to evaluate her friendships. The last family in a desolate city learns to be human through an awkward appropriation of popular culture. Pass it sounds like there's a lot going on in it. Passive aggressive furniture provides an unwelcome romantic advice. Tense interplanetary politics distort Emma's love life. Jane's ex-girlfriend reappears. Radical altered and insistent on a catch-up Tokyo's teenagers disaffected and numb from excessive screen time find distraction in violence so here we go Suzuki's singular slant on science fiction remains fresh and essential so it's concerns about technology gender and imperialism dovetail irresistibly with flights of speculative wonder and with a kitchen sink in order in the order of even her wildest story Suzuki reminds us that while technology may be limitless relationships remain impossible so yeah it sounds very sort of current and unusual for a um 
selection of short stories. So that's book two. David has also picked um, Nikesh Shukla, Brown Baby. This is Nikesh's memoir of race, family and home. Why have you picked this, David? Uh, because uh, I just think it looks like an interesting story that talks about feminism and race. And I think it'll just be... As, I, I kind of like reading that book, so I find it very interesting and powerful. Lovely. David does... You do enjoy a book about race, don't you? Quite yeah. often you're... You, David likes Nick Stone, who's a YA author, um, and her books always feature that. So here we go. This is non, the non-fiction debut from um, Nikesh Shukla, and it is... Um, it, he explores the themes of racism, feminism, as David's already said, parenting and shifting the ideas of home. With writing that will both fill and open your heart, this by turn heartbreaking, hilariously funny and intensely relatable memoir is dedicated to the author's two young daughters and is in remembrance of the grandmother that never got that he never got to meet. I do remember hearing him in an uh, in a um, on a podcast talking about this through life grief food yum fatherhood and often the cluttered experiences that make us each who we are Shukla shows how impossible how it's possible to believe in hope so that sounds exciting as well so that's the third one David picked I will say David mm -hmm. two from the orange one from the white what yep. are you doing this is a purple one. Whatever happened to interracial love? Stories, more stories, David. There's two stories. sets of stories oh, okay. in one I'll try year. And not pick any more short stories. Okay. Um, this um, is whatever happened to interracial love, published by Granter. I bought this second hand for 50p. This was a bargain 50p book. This is written in the late 1960s and early 1970s, but didn't wasn't published in Kathleen Collins's lifetime. Um, these stories trans transport the reader into a world of civil rights conferences and sit-ins, church rallies and art galleries, where poems, freedom writers, and lonely young women wait out hot summers in dingy. New, dingy, dingy, dingy New York art apartments, all wondering whatever happened to interracial love. So yeah, that's two lots of sh short stories, a non-fiction and a YA book. What else will he bring up next? Oh, actually, three lots of short stories because I've also got what she's having. So definitely avoid, well, I mean, obviously, David, it's up to you, but three lots of short stories in one month might be a bit much for me. Yeah. I'll move around here. I don't know what that is. Have you ever read The Curious Incident of the Dog in the Night? I have. Did you like it? Yeah. Well, there you go. You can have this then. Oh, okay. Thank you. Because it says, if you love that, you'll love this. Okay, so this is Pigeon English by Stephen, that's over there, Kelman. I remember this book. When I lived with my friend Neve, she didn't read as much as I did, but I remember her buying this at the airport to fly back to Ireland and saying it was really, really good. Um, I think, I don't think this was her copy. If it is, no, I don't think this was her copy. So this is, um, it says here, so as David said, it's a, it's like the Curious Incident of the Dog in the Night Time. Oh, it says, if you like the Curious Incident of the Dog in the Night Time, or if you like Room, both of which are books that I like, enjoyed. 11-year-old Harrison Apoku, the second best runner in year seven, races through his life, his new life in England, and his personalised trainers, the Adidas stripes drawn on with a marker pen, blissfully unaware of the re very real threat around him. Newly arrived from Ghana with his mother and older sister Lydia, Harry absorbs the many strange elements of city life and the bewildering array of Haribo sweets to the frightening, fascinating gang of older boys from his school. But his life is changed forever when one of his friends is murdered. As the victim's nearly new football boots hang in tribute on railings be behind fluorescent tape and a and a police appeal draws only silence. Harry decides to act, unwittingly endangering the fragile web which his mother has spun around her family to keep them safe. Interesting, cool. So that's five now, David. You've yep. got to pick three more. What have you got? So I've gone for Nick and Charlie. Oh. This looks like a bit of a YA. It is. So and, I, and you know how much I like a YA. So. Have you read any of the Heartstopper books yet? No, no I, I don't haven't. think you have. I keep saying no. you will. So um, the Heartstopper uh, graphic novels are love stories about Nick and Charlie by Alice Oseman. This is um, a novella. Now, I don't know if this is some of the story of from Heartstopper pulled and then put into a novella. It still has illustrations and things like that, not as much as the the, the, um, the graphic novels. Um, but yeah, I really enjoyed this and this is about, as I said, Nick and Charlie. Everyone knows that Nick and Charlie are the perfect couple, that they're inseparable, but now Nick is leaving for university. This isn't this isn't the early days of them, Nick and Charlie. And Charlie will be left behind at sixth form. As the time to say goodbye draws closer, both boys begin to question, is their love strong enough to survive being apart? At thir After all, first loves rarely last forever. Oh, that sounds cute, David. Yeah. Two, four, six. Yeah. You've got two more to pick, please, okay. sir. Okay, right. I'm going to pick this one. This is a risk because I know we've read ones about bigger boys and girls, and you you fin I can't remember what it was, but you finished it quite quickly because it was you didn't enjoy how much she was constantly wanting to lose weight. I can't remember what it was. No, yeah, I can't remember what that was either. And, but, this is um, but this is one about like accepting being big. This is so No Big Deal by Bethany Rutter. Um, I follow Bethany on Instagram and Twitter. 
I love her. Um, and it says, um, Emily knows she's smart. Emily knows she's funny. Emily knows she's awesome. Emily knows she's fat. She doesn't need anyone to tell her any of these things. She likes herself and she likes her body. She just thinks it's time everyone else caught up. With a newly slim bestie, a mum knee deep in fad diets and increasing pressure to change, Emily faces a constant battle to be her true self. But when she meets gorgeous Jo, things start to change. Somehow she's going to have to convince everyone and herself that it's no big deal. Um, and also, if I remember rightly, Bethany has signed this to me because Simon um, oh, cool. Simon got that signed uh, for me. Hair in my face. Right, one more book, David. Yeah, Quite a good selection. Hey, have you read this yet? Yes. Yeah, you, picked that, you picked that for me two years ago. Right. <laughs> that was the bookshop book by Jen Campbell. Sorry, Jen. David's picked it, picked it up. You picked that out for me the first year we did this. You started reading it and you thought it was boring. <laughs> uh, I did want to go and say green because I don't think I've picked a green one yet. Okay, there's a few more greens up here as well. I mean, have you read that yet? No. But we should read that. Oh, it's quite a meaty boy, isn't it? But yeah, go on then. Okay. Last it. book David picked is The Archers and Bridge of War. <laughs> I only got this last um, month. This is a book set at, um, in God, 1939. Stressful turns into 1940 and this is the very beginnings of um, the archers as we sort of know it now um, one of the characters that are the characters that are in it that I sort of recognize are um, Peggy and baby Bert who's now dead and was an old man it says here, it is midnight as 1939 turns into 1940 and Walter Gabriel speaks the same line that opened the very first radio episode and a happy new year to you all. For Ambridge, a village in the heart of the English countryside this year will bring changes in, no, in ways that no one was expecting. From the Pargetters at Lower Loxley to the loving, hard-working Archer family at Brookfield Farm, the war will be hard for all of them and the new year brings the arrival of evac evacuees to Ambridge, shaking things up in the close-knit rural community. As the villagers embrace wartime spirit, the families that listeners have known and loved for generations face an uphill battle to keep secrets hidden especially as someone is intent on revealing those secrets to the whole village oh. so here we go let's uh, let's have a look at my tbr would you mind standing there david because you're going to take them from me as we go oh do you want me to hold them and then you take them as yeah you go? so the archers and bridget war number one no big deal by bethany rutter nick and charlie by alice oseman pigeon english by stephen kelman dropped one. Whatever Happened to Interracial Love by Kathleen Collins. Excuse me while I pick that other one up. Brown Baby by Nikesh Shukla. Terminal Boredom by Izumi Suzuki. Boy Queen by George Lester. And then the two that we were, were had to be read this month. What She's Having, Stories of Women and Food. And No, uh, no, no that isn't called No. Plain Bad Heroines by Emily M. Danforth. Thank you very much. Let me know what you think of all of these books. Um, have you read any of these? Would any of these appear on your TBR this month? Um, and I'll see you all soon for another booktube video. Goodbye!